Okay, we're going to start out with a question um, that is something that, that will sort of go into another question. I'll start out with Phil. Phil, where are you on um, right-to-work laws? And as governor, would you advocate a right-to-work state? Uh, would you try to move to that position? And, and how do you go about that in a state that seems to be dominated by unions on every level? It's a, it's a great question, and, and I can tell you that we have to become a right-to-work state. If we don't, we will not be competitive with other states in the country. We will not attract jobs. And how we get that accomplished is we get more Republicans in the House of Representatives at the state level. We're at 42 right now, folks. In 2012, we have the opportunity to take the House and end up with a Republican governor, Republican Senate, Republican House. We can get the things we need through the legislature at that point to get this done. So it's going to take some time and some energy, but we have to get it done. Thank you. Same question for Bobby. Sure. Um, I, I think if Bobby was presented with a right-to-work bill from both houses of the legislature, she'd sign it. But I think we have to be realistic about this. I don't think, and I think Bobby feels this way, right-to-work legislation is probably not that important in, in terms of all the other problems we have in Kentucky. Uh, labor unions are, are declining. They're not that big a deal in Kentucky. Uh, my, point, my, only, my point was that the two aren't the same. Like say, right to work states like Tennessee have prevailing wage laws. And the LRC, several years ago, made several recommendations that the governor by himself, without legislation, could change the prevailing wage law to greatly increase the, the uh, or greatly decrease the problems that we have with that and the over, overpaying the wages. Those could be implemented. I, I think Governor Fletcher didn't implement them for several reasons and never got around to doing it. But any governor, um, and Bali would be one, would certainly go back and look at that. I think there are avenues for a governor without the, the legislature getting involved could change prevailing wage laws, how, how those are administered, and, and take out most of the bad effects right away. So that's, you know, that's our opinion. We disagree on, on a few things, but you know, that's what we're here for. I do have a follow-up question for you based on that, on the whole prevailing wage union issue. Scott Walker in Wisconsin has been trying to do a variety of things depending on where you sit in the political aisle. You think he's trying to bust the unions or you think he's trying to save the budget. Would, and I'll ask this question of both of you, if Bobby Holsclaw is governor, would she take the lead on taking some of the, uh, some of the uh, same measures that Scott Walker has taken when it comes to public sector unions in an effort to weaken them initially in the hopes that they will no longer be negotiating against the taxpayers that are ostensibly their employers. Does that question make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me get into that by saying I think uh, Mandy's talked about this quite a lot. I followed her, her comments on it. And I think we're fundamentally different from Wisconsin and several other states in that we don't have collective bargaining for state employees in Kentucky. Bobby wants to keep that the law. We only have collective bargaining for a handful of local employees of counties in certain parts of Kentucky and certain school boards. And those counties want to do that. If that's up to them, it's not that big a deal. I mean, the problems Jefferson County Schools, for example, has is not because the, they have collective bargaining. It's because the people who get elected are Jefferson County School Board. I mean, that, that's the long and the short of it. And unless you want to have some sort of plan to just get rid of get rid of our school board, which may not be so bad, it's not really the, it's not it's not really the unions who are doing it. These these states up north, like Wisconsin and Michigan and Ohio and Indiana to a certain extent, I mean in Illinois, my goodness, they are just totally whipped up upside the, and down their head by these public sector unions. And like I said, in Kentucky, we've got a lot of problems. The unions are not. You know, they might be, if they had the opportunity, would be pretty bad news. They just don't have the power right now. We've got other problems in that. I just, I just don't think it's, it's, it's at all comparable. But Bobby in no way is in favor of, collective, of expanding uh, collective bargaining for any, anybody in Kentucky. About 14% of our state employees are unionized. It is, uh, comparably speaking, one of the lower percentages in the nation. But we do have a, a, fair, a fairly large percentage, and I don't know the number, that are what are called merit pay employees. And merit pay employees are state employees who are essentially a union codified in, in labor law. They have a lot of the same things that would remind you of tenure. 
you know, in a college system or, a, or an education system. And we really have overpromised to these folks over the years in terms of things like pension benefits and, and health care benefits when they retire. And we have to change that model because we simply have overpromised and we can't pay that bill anymore. We do have, uh, in Jefferson County, we do have, the teachers do have the right to collectively bargain and they have the right to strike. Um, and honestly, the, the school board is owned by that union, and that's a big reason why our local school system is in such a shambles. And until we change that dynamic, our public school systems are going to continue to flounder. Because unions are not for the customer. Unions are for unions. Their main goal is to build their brethren and their, and their, uh, their ranks so they can collect more dues. And then take those dues and fund political action committees that in turn give money to politicians that are pro-union. And that iron triangle, if you will, has to stop and it has to stop now.